So uh, awesome. So welcome, everyone. So today's about rejection. And uh, yeah, so I got my uh, next book back with 11,579 edits. And I, I put a poll out to this uh, to this uh, session saying, you know, we're going to recode fear of rejection, uh, uh, you know, shout out or call out to all artists, uh, innovators, inventors, entrepreneurs, who, who sees himself as somebody that is in one of those? You are an entrepreneur, you are a creator, maybe a salesperson, you are an artist. Uh, the thing is, is that the one place that most entrepreneurs, salespeople, business people uh, stop themselves, artists especially, they stop themselves, is that they're scared of rejection. That they're scared of criticism. Uh, they they just want to get um, told they're good uh, more than they actually want to go through the work of of doing something that can be rejected. And and I'll put my hand up. Me too. Uh, there's there's really these two worlds. You know, one world as you all know, where you give the power to your unconscious agenda, and and you take action in alignment with that. And then another world where you just go for your end results. And so I thought it was pretty funny. I didn't finish high school and, uh, you know, now sold 300,000 copies of this book. And, uh, and it had 8,000 edits that came back, which I thought was a lot until I did my next book. And uh, I'm staring at it right now. And I'll show you guys all. I, I decided to screenshot it for proof. So I'll show you all again. 11,579 edits have come back from my editor uh, this time. So if you want to go out there and uh, create, you, you must know you are going to get criticism. You are going to get uh, feedback. You are going to have to face that. and if you give the power to avoiding criticism or rejection or, or, or negativity or other people's opinions, if you give the power to, to a fear of that, you're simply not going to be successful in inventing and creating or, or getting you know, your heart out to the world. Who agrees with that? If you live with uh, giving the power to uh, a resistance or a fear of, of rejection or criticism, you're going to have a very hard time, uh, a very difficult time creating what you love. So let's explore where does this fear of rejection come from? You know, what, why, is it, why is it such a thing? Well, it, it comes from a need to belong, a need to belong. Uh, in our early formative years, uh, we, we cannot fend for ourselves, And and then because we know we cannot fend for ourselves, cannot feed ourselves, uh, we know that we need others to look after us. And so our brain codes up that any sort of criticism or rejection uh, from them is a very scary, worrying thought because maybe we'll get outcast from the tribe. Does that make sense? So it's a very it's very useful. So there's it comes from a need to uh, you know to belong, right? And and that's a very important thing to understand is that it's actually a very good mechanism. You know, it's it is very it is very useful in certain places. So that's where it can come from. And uh, another place it can come from is is this idea or a need to be perfect, a need to be perfect. If you have a need to be perfect, you're very, very, very against being criticized, doing anything that is wrong. You want to be seen as good. You want to be seen as doing it right. And, and, and that's important because being good and being right, again, helps you fit in with the tribe. So this fear of rejection is, is important, isn't it? it? It is important. However, it's just not something that we need in certain circumstances. We don't need it in, uh, you know, writing a book or we don't need it bringing our heart into the world. We don't need it when we walk up to somebody else and when we say, you know, would you like to go on a date or will you marry me or I do or it's over. We don't we don't need it there. We needed it. We don't need it anymore. It's it, it's just outdated information. And it's very important. It's just outdated information because we must ask ourselves: 
is is it really important to put the power in other people's opinions or is it important to do something different and that something different is to to use feedback as learning so there's two ways that you can you can uh you can be with, uh, in relationship to to taking your creative endeavors out to the world one you can put the power in trying to be right and trying to belong and never getting rejected. So just fill me in in the chat box. If someone put their power in never being rejected and always being right and never being wrong, you know, what action might they take? They, they, they'll probably take an action where they would try to get everything right before they start, right? Like, uh, it, it, do you know, so, someone who has a big fear of rejection do you think they might procrastinate? They call it getting prepared. Right? Like they would just, they, uh, do you think that as someone who has a fear of rejection, might they just try to keep on getting a, 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 another degree and another degree and another course and another course where they might try to do uh, a, an exaggerated amount of learning as a preemptive strike on getting it wrong? Right, they, so, but, but really, they're scared of being rejected, right? They, they, so so they, they, might, they might do that. That, that, might, be, that might be something. This, they, just, they just keep on planning, they keep on practicing, they, they never go out there. What else might someone do if they put the power in, in other people's opinions and, and not being rejected? So, so they can take inaction. Inaction is one. They can over plan, they can over learn keep on learning right they can daydream they can just daydream it can they can always just you know daydream and 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 have these ideas but never start anything right so that's that's something right another another way that they they might do it is they they never do something that is outside their comfort zone they never take a chance they, they figured out how to do a few things and they stay in their little box. They stay in control. They never do anything outside of that. They just stay in their, their place and their control. What else might they do? Fill me in. They might, uh, they might always just put it off. It's never the right time. They might put it off. They might just keep putting it off. What other actions might they do? So they're never outside their comfort zone. They overlearn. They put it off. Hmm. You know, another another thing that someone might do is they might always change the idea. It's never quite right. So then they kind of just start one, then start another, then start another, then start another, but they never really commit. True. And, and, and they might do this in many different ways in relationship, in their business, with their arts, with their kids, with whatever they, they might, they might do it in many ways, but, but they, they truly just deny. So, so that's one way they can live giving the power. And these are all sorts of actions. These are all sorts of actions that they might be doing. For, for me, what I did is I only did things that I knew others would clap me for. So when I lived in a, in a place where I put the power in other people's opinions, I only started businesses and only focused on things that made sense to the world. And I denied super conscious. I denied doing what I really wanted to do because it was woo woo or out there or uh, could have judgment. And so I only went for things that I knew others would celebrate sport, uh, music, uh, a digital marketing business. That's what I did. And, uh, and it was, it was okay. So that's one world. Then there's another whole world over here. And this is a world where you don't put the power in, uh, in other people's opinions. In this world, you put the power in the end result. So in this world, you put the power in the end result. The end result matters. And you don't care how, you don't, you don't mind uh, what you need to do to get there, you know, obviously not hurting people, but you don't mind. You, you have the end result, you take an action. That action is met with results. 
the results give you a learning. This learning, you then refocus and put into your next action. And this is the other world you live in, where you live in a world of end results. So there's two worlds we're talking about here. There's one world where you put the power in other people's opinions, what, what matters to other people, what they think about everything, what, what's going to happen, what do they think, or you put it in end results. And when you shift to living in end results, you take an action, that action either works or it doesn't, it either gets judged or praised, whatever, whatever happens, you get learning from that learning, you refocus, you take another action and you just and you just move. And so can you see how there's these 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 two worlds and we need to shift you into the end result world, because when you live in that world, you're able to take the correct action and, and you go for it. But I want you to know. Uh, as you step into the creative reality and go for it. Not everyone out there is going to be happy about it. Not everyone out there is going to clap it. Not everyone's going to type on your videos and go, that was so great. That's not how the world is. And so as you go for creating, you must expect it really, not create it, but just know that's going to be part of it. In fact, if there's no one criticizing or giving you feedback on your work, you're surrounded by liars. That you surround, you are. You are just surrounded by people who are just who are, who are not useful to your creative endeavor. Can I get a true for that? Is that true? If you really want to create, you want to surround yourself with people who who are actually, you know, they're going to tell you, you know, what it is that's good and what you need to improve. And you, you must be able to live in that world. You must. You don't. You, you know, uh, like. A lot of my big, the biggest critics out there are, are actually just negative supporters. They're actually just helping me understand some viewpoints I don't know. So rejection is very important. It's very important. In fact, rejection, criticism, other people's opinions needs to be chosen. Right, it needs to be chosen. You want it. You want good feedback. You want strong people around you who say, "You know, what did I? I sent my book to um to Brit. I was so proud of it. I don't know if Brittany's on this call." And she goes, "Well, that's a, it's a good start." She said to me, "It's a good start. I hate the main character." I was like, "Wow. All right. Cool. Tell me more." I sent my book to Hannah. Hannah said, I love this bit, I love this bit, this bit needs work, that bit needs work. And, and you need people, you need this, and you must not, you must not be scared uh, about, about getting feedback and being having your work being told the truth. So let's let's uh let's all choose if it's okay with you that you want to live in a world where, and let me just ask you, because I'm not gonna um project, but would you think it's a it's a it's a useful thing for you to live in a world where, where you're wanting criticism, wanting rejection, wanting this sort of feedback and learning from it and getting better? And not and not having this childish reaction to it, because it is childish of, oh no, someone doesn't think my stuff is good. Ah. Just just tell me, is this is this useful? Would that would that be useful? You actually look for it. You go, cool, I need to find some people who disagree with this. When I look at the, the leaders of the world in politics, the leaders in the world in business, the, the artists out there, the musicians, the, the book, the one thing I see, well, not one thing, sorry, one of the things that I see in all of them is, is they don't seem to be worried about what people are thinking about them. They, they, they're doing their thing, but they also, they're receiving the feedback. They're not just denying it. They're not saying, screw you. Do you see that? They're not, they're not just saying, screw you. I don't care what you think. They, they listen to it. They take it on. But they, they, they seem to be able to take it and, and hear it without this fear of it. It's like, 
for whatever reason, they, they have a great relationship to criticism. They have a great uh, relationship to, to other people's disagreements and opinions. Would you, do you guys see that as well? When you look at people you go, wow, they're a great leader or they're a great creator or they're a great this or, well, they're doing something impressive. They, they seem to have a, a relationship that's odd to, to rejection and, and to uh, criticism and to feedback and even public scrutiny. You know, you look at these celebrities, these actors and these musicians and there's, there's people all the time, you know, you know, saying negativity about them, but they, but they seem to take it on. They seem to take it on. So I would like all of us to be able to have that. So let, let's get into a into a true choice that uh, that that you that you feel uh, you might be limiting because of a, a worry or a fear or even a small concern about what other people's opinions are. So just let me know in the chat box by typing in a number one. When you've when you've chosen the choice you want to work with today, just one you think might might not be flowing as well as you would like it because you're putting power, uh, you know, in other people's opinions. You know, just just oh yeah, I think you know, I think it's my coaching business, or I think it's you know my uh, my relationship, or you know, I, I I would really like my relationship to be like this, but I'm so worried what other people are going to say, or or you know, or I really want to get my art out to the world or whatever it is. So I just want to, you know, uh, choose a uh, choose a choice that you, you think could could probably flow, be in more momentum if you weren't always, you know, worried about what everyone else thinks about it. Awesome. So when you're ready, we're going to just close our eyes and we're going to create it as we want it to be. We're going to get into a creative structure and create it as we want it to be. So, uh, you know, have the choice. And uh, it, by the way, if you're brand new and you don't have choices, um, we do have um, four choices that everyone uh, here has. We call them the core choices. And you can borrow one of those for today, or, or even if you want to, they can be used at any time. They are, I choose uh, to live a life I love. Uh, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. I choose health and vitality, and I choose to live my true nature and purpose. So you, you don't have to wait to write your own choices to join any session. You can always use one of those. So when you're ready, uh, just make the choice by saying it in your mind, eyes closed, I choose the end result of whatever it is. So mine will be, I choose the end result of uh, another best-selling book. And, and step into the end result of that. See it as done. Find a time in the future where, where that result is complete and you're living it. See it through your own eyes, hear with your ears, breathe into the lungs of the you that has already created this. Ah, oh, feels so good. Maybe find another moment, really build up this in your mind. What might it be like? Once you've already created this, choose it, engage with it emotionally. How would it feel? What would you see? What would it be like? Who would be there? What might you say to yourself? And just notice how good it feels. Fantastic. Open your eyes, come back to now.
How was that? So now that you're back here, I want you just to tune into the current reality. In the current reality, how is your fear of what other people think stopping you? In the current reality, where is your focus? If you had no worry about what other people thought, what might you do different? What actions are you taking to avoid being rejected? Are you over planning, overthinking, uh, over learning? Are you putting it off? Are you always changing your idea? What are you doing as an action to avoid getting criticized or judged? And just tune into that action of what you do. Notice where in your body do you feel this feeling? Like, what does it feel like when you're taking that action, when you're changing ideas, when you're, what does it feel like when you put it off? Or how does it feel? Just notice it. Yeah, what is it like? What is it like when you're, you know, not putting that video out or worried about what he will say. Who are you most worried about their opinion? Mm. Like, who, like, really, who, who is it? Who is it? is it? Is it a parent? Is it a colleague? Is it a made up person? Is it someone from your past? Is it a spouse? Is it a child? Who is, like, who are you worried? Like, what? Mm. If you were to feel into this feeling, and these ideas, just, just notice what it's like to be you when you are putting the power in what everyone else thinks of what you're doing. Just notice that. What is that like? Hmm. So what we know is that every behavior and every action has an intended positive outcome. And, and the key word with that is intended. Now, it, it also can be outdated. You know, just because it's an intended pos positive outcome, it, it doesn't mean that it's positive. You know, just because at, at some early age, you wanted to make sure the kids at school didn't reject you, uh, so you you just followed along. Doesn't mean that was wrong. It just means now when you when you're trying to launch your business, that same that same worry is coming in. So it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just had an intent that that maybe isn't getting fulfilled. Makes sense. So if you were able to write it. 
uh, how would you how would you write the rule? Make sure that uh, I uh, make dad proud. Make sure that uh, how would you write it? Make sure that um, I'm never laughed at. Make sure that I fit in. Make sure that other people accept me. Make sure that I don't look stupid. What? What? Make sure that. How would you write the rule for you? I just want you to consider this. These feelings. Make. Make sure. Make sure that. Make sure that I'm liked. Make sure that I get it right and don't embarrass myself. Make sure I'm not ridiculed. So when you feel into these feelings that we're acknowledging, that, that what is the rule? And can you see, maybe not for you, but for somebody else, can you acknowledge that there is an intended positive outcome there? There is an intent that is to be that to be positive, to keep you safe, to keep you connected, to make others look good. You know, can you can you all accept that at some point there was a, a positive intent? I'll say that it's turned out positive. It's just intended it was. Yeah. Even if it's just to make sure that others are happy. Yeah. Make sure that my light is hidden. The positive intent might be so that other people, uh, other, other people's light is seen. Yeah, nice. So everyone, everyone's got a got a uh, a little rule. So we're going to call this rule a little bit of a work agreement, and we're going to imagine that there are parts of our consciousness that we give uh, behaviors to, and these behaviors, these memories, these instructions, these parts of our consciousness. They sit there dormant until they are called upon. And so they're just waiting. And then when a time arises where that work order is needed, this, this uh, part of your consciousness will spring into action. So, for example, if you have a, uh, a rule that says, make sure I don't embarrass myself. And that's a rule. And it was taught to your consciousness by, uh, by, uh, by a four-year-old you who was, was so embarrassed or a seven-year-old you or make sure I don't disappoint mum and dad. And, 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 and mum's a, uh, mom's a, a doctor and, and, and dad's a, a lawyer. And you, you really want to be an artist. And you've got this rule, make sure you don't disappoint them. And that was created at age three. And, and so these little rules, just imagine that, you know, that rule is sitting there and it can get triggered into um, your consciousness at any point. So you, you move along in life and then you get to this point and you want to start, you're feeling all good, then you want to start a business, you're feeling all good and you, you, you get started and then everyone says you need to do a video. So you get there, you get right in front of the camera, you know what you're about to say, you're ready to go, and boom. All of a sudden, that piece of your consciousness with this work order gets triggered and you do not know what to say. Or you get right to the point where you've got to ask someone for money. You know your product or services uh, is perfect. You know that they'll value it. You know it's a good price. You know you can deliver it. You're ready to go. You're talking to the person. You've done. You, you've done everything, 
and they're looking at you and you're about to say, and it's going to be a thousand dollars a month. And you mumble it, you stumble it, you lose your confidence because all of a sudden the part of you don't get rejected. Boom, pops in. Don't you see that? Who's, 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 who's got this? So this, this is called a part-time personality. It's not your main personality. It's a part-time personality. And, and so, you know, there's this part of you that says, you, you, you know, uh, never get laughed at by boys, never get laughed at by girls, never look silly. So you see an attractive person uh, across the across the room or, you know, they they work on the floor above your office and you see them every day. You bump into them, uh, you know, in the elevator or outside. And, and, and every time you think I should really just ask them out for a coffee. And every time you're about to do it, boom, there pops the rule and, and it, it just pops out and you can't do it. Who knows what I'm talking about? These part time personalities. Every part-time personality has a work order. This work order or contract was given to it by an earlier version of you. It may have been a one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, but part-time personalities, they have no concept of time. Literally, they have no concept of time. They're, they're not living in the, in the part of our brain that understands time. And so they have not realized that you are no longer a three-year-old. You know, just imagine all these part-time personalities. They spend most of their time playing cards, having a cigarette break. And every so often, all of a sudden, the alarm bells go off and it says, embarrassment's about to happen and it races out and says no and then stops the embarrassment then goes back and goes oh wow that was back to playing cards having a cigarette having a coffee just relaxing in the in the part-time personality uh uh you know uh lunch room and, and it has no idea that that uh that so much time has passed because it only gets called on for two to five minutes at a time. The last time it met you, you came running in to the, to the part-time personality uh, lunchroom and you were in diapers and you said, make sure I don't disappoint mommy and daddy. Okay, got it. And it's just been following along on that work order for what it thinks is maybe half an hour or two hours. But for you, it's been a lifetime. And so we can uh, we could do a great uh, a great process right now where we can actually update this part of us and this part time personality and say hey thank you so much uh, for being a an incredible worker and doing exactly what I asked right because isn't it interesting that that part of you did exactly what has been asked true like it literally has always been able to help you, you know, not embarrass you by, by stopping you. So it's, it's a great aspect of you. And you go, hey, you know, I really appreciate all of your hard work. And, you know, you, you listen to that two-year-old. Uh, I'm actually now that same two-year-old. And, uh, you know, I've just grown up a bit. And, and now, actually, like, I prefer um, to do things that, that do, do get criticism because that way I'm going to learn and grow. That's actually what I prefer now. Like, they actually like, I'm, I don't mind if other people don't like what I do now. Like, it's okay. I want that. I want the feedback. I, does that make sense? And we can actually make that update because you created it. You were not born uh, with the programs. You created it, and for good reason. For good reason. It's, it's been a diligent worker. And one of the, the best things to do if you want to create change in an aspect of you is to get in rapport with it. You know, really appreciate, get in rapport with the fact that it, it's really protected you from embarrassment or protected you from shining your light more than others. And it's done exactly what it was asked to. Does that make sense? It's, it's not exactly what, what it's been asked of it. And, and that's great. And, and, and it's not it's it's no one's fault that we never got given the rule book, but you found your way to it.